Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is on the air and it's heard on WNLV 860 AM and W293CX 106.5 FM in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. WWDB 860 AM, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. WAAM 1600 AM and 92.7 FM, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And KMET 1490 AM, Banning, California. Coming up on the program, we're going to talk about how much food do you need to grow in order to feed your family for a year, as well as things that you should be aware of before you buy plants at your local nursery. Our guest, she is an author of her new book, Start Your Farm. Ellen Polishuk will be with us to discuss not only farm-related conversation, but things that you can implement in your own backyard garden, plus your garden questions. It's a jam-packed hour that's coming up, so let's start it right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you've taken time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you are in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, or Banning, California. We are so happy you've joined us, or somewhere else, listening via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, under the radio tab, on podcast replay, or in-studio video replay. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Joy Baird. Next to me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. You can find all of our content at the Wisconsin VegetableGardener.com, where you can find Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and over 1,300 garden video short and long format of in-garden and replays of this show in podcast and in-studio form. Uh, you can read uh, the, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is sponsored, executive sponsor of the program is... Plant, planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA and we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. For the size that fits your project, visit powerplanter.com. There's a number one ways in which you can contact us through the pro- during the program and after the program, and they all revolve around the Ivy Organics hotline. Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned to damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 3-in-1 Plant Guard email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can text us on the instant access ivyorganics.com text line and that's 414-368-9311 you can tweet us using hashtag twvg or twitter handle is at twvg show don't forget our text line is at 414-368-9311 we want to uh, before we get in the program want to welcome a few uh, groups of people in we want to welcome kmet 1490 am banning california welcome to the program this will be the first program that they get uh we <clears throat> worked it worked out that uh, they reached out to us and uh, even though they're in zone nine and ten our, our content is very relevant uh to general gardening so uh we're happy to have them and also we want to welcome WAAM WAM Radio, their new frequency 92.7 FM out of the Ann Arbor, Michigan area. Happy to have you along and listening on the new frequency there. So we want to start with plants. Uh, we want to go over what you need to be aware of before you go to your local garden center or even the big box store and purchase your plant starts for this year. I also want to say that you would also maybe want to go there throughout the season for advice as well. Right. This is not a or one and done like trip. fertilizer or something like that. So you want to keep in mind that not every plant they sell can be planted outside in your yard year round. And you think, okay, well, why are they selling these plants? Well, some people like to plant tropicals um, during... We've got a dwarf lime tree right. in the house. So, so there's different reasons why they sell those plants. It's not necessarily because you can grow them year round. So if you come along and you see a banana tree, don't think that being in 
the upper Midwest, you're going to make that banana tree grow all year round. Right. In, in the Southern California area, they're in zone 9 and 10. They have 200, you guys have 255 frost-free days. So there still is a cold period that not everything's going to grow there uh, to the degree that it would be in, let's say, South Texas or Mexico type of environment. But, yeah, be aware. But they have those there because they are unique. And some things we can grow year-round indoors or in your greenhouse. We talked about what you need to know before you purchase or buy a greenhouse. If you're wanting to grow tropicals and you put a heater in there, you can do that year-round. It's a, it's a great hobby and a very rewarding one once you understand how all of that uh, functions. Right. If it doesn't look healthy, it doesn't mean that you can make it healthy. Um, unless you're, you're not going to baby this thing. You're not the baby the thing. You're not, you're not the plant whisperer. I don't know. You just want to keep in mind that you want to look for healthy plants. Now, if there are some bugs or pests or whatever on the plants and you see some, that's not necessarily the worst thing. That's actually a good it's sign a good to a sign, certain degree. Right, because it means that there's life around that plant. But if you see it infested with something, aphids, and aphids or you see like a lot of them, then you may want to say something to the manager or you may just want to go somewhere else. Well, we, uh, the official garden center of the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show is Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center here in Milwaukee. If you do not have a Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center in your area, which you won't because they're unique here to Milwaukee, uh, you want to find somebody that has, you want to find an independent garden center like we have here. We're very fortunate enough to have uh, them as a sponsor, but just have them in the Milwaukee area to begin with because of their, their knowledge and the uh, availability of materials and products that they have on, on the premise. And we always encourage people to go to your independent garden center for a myriad of reasons, but mostly because you have educated staff there. They care. They care. Um, you're not. It's not like when you go to a big box store and Bill from Paint might be helping out in the garden center and he's just basically there to stock stock stuff or he was in pharmacy yesterday yeah. he was in you know, uh, you, know, you know food the other day he yeah. sold a lawnmower last week right yeah so you definitely want to keep that in mind that's one advantage a huge advantage actually to the independent garden center also they they have a lot of knowledge usually about local things too so that's something to keep in mind well the big box store the prices may be slightly more uh, slightly cheaper but you lose the information and, and the it is, care it is that convenient the plant, yeah, to go to a big box store and i understand that completely but if you want you pay to, for what you, you pay get. for what you get <laughs> exactly so sometimes you need to be a little inconvenient to get a return on your your time investment don't be so, afraid to talk to people right don't be afraid to talk to the staff and also um you want to make sure that the staff if they care if the staff cares it means that the management cares and it means that the higher it's a trickle down effect it it definitely it definitely is um and also you can feel free to give feedback and compliments and that is good or or concerns or 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 criticism yep that's part of we we enjoy we we don't delight in getting emails of people saying hey i don't like when you do this but it helps us be better at what we do it really does it's the same thing for the garden center Definitely. So, um, yeah, so you can give good and constructive feedback. Don't just walk in there and be like, I don't like this layout because that's not really constructive. I don't like the color blue. I don't like the color blue. It's not constructive, but if it's something that is constructive. They will appreciate it. They will appreciate it. Don't buy vegetables in bloom. This is very important because it typically means that that plant is in shock, especially if it's May or April. In May, most, April, May, June. April, that, that, May, June. That tomato plant is now 18 inches tall. It's got a bunch of buds on it. It's in a three-inch cup, and it's stressed out, thinking it's going to die. So what is the first thing a plant does when it's stressed? Immediately put seeds on and for reproduction for the next generation. Right. So you want to keep that in mind. It's cute. Oh, look at this cute tomato plant. It already has tomatoes on it or flowers on it. No, you want to buy a healthy-looking plant. I don't care if it's 97.5% off. It's not going to do you a bit of good. But you could be the plant rescue. It's not going to help. <laughs> not going to help. Your w- they, don't, they don't typically discount plants anyway. No. Um, because it's not, it's it's whatever. But, um, yeah, you want to keep in mind that if it looks, almost, I would say that point too healthy, um, to the point where it's putting the buds on or the whatever, then you definitely want to make sure you move on to Flowers, something different situation. The flowers are beginning to... F- open up that's fine or they've already opened up totally different realm of category here when we talk about that another thing look at all your options yes we go to a garden center because we want to purchase tomatoes or a daffodil or uh, a whatever plant but see what they have available they they tip they, they have a variety of different 
plants in that particular category in what you're looking for. And just because you want plant A doesn't mean that plant C, D, or F may not be a better choice for you. So just don't go in with a tunnel vision. Here's what I want. Here's what I'm going to do with it. Nobody can, you know, that that's what my plan is. Options are great to look at because they may have stuff that you didn't know was available that now you want to choose that particular plant over the, the one that you had selected to begin with. Right. Um, so then you also want to look for a garden center that values and promotes education. So Blue Mouse, they have a garden center that they have the the teaching series they have classes they, have they classes. bring experts they bring in ex- experts in they have that they have the whole setup where you can uh, collect your blue mail box or whatever right. they also class. have uh, activities for children to come in and, and engage with them to make like, things like for house uh, for Mother's Day yeah. and Father's Day and that type of thing to interact with the community it's not just a come in and buy the plants see you later next year type of situation no they definitely interact with the community uh, you so. want that in your garden center wherever you're at in the country you want to find somebody that actually cares not only for yeah they want to sell good plants they want to make money but if they don't have happy customers customers don't come back they complain to everybody and don't don't revisit your establishment they're talking a bill over and paying to the big box store so and, uh, you want to determine what you're going to do with the plant before you buy it. This is uh, a common thing. You might get excited. You see a plant, and you're like, that's a really cool plant. I really want that plant. And then all of a sudden you realize that you don't have space for it. Or maybe you're maybe you're undereducated. You think that plant is going to fit in a spot you have in mind, but it's not ideal. And this reverts back to talking to the staff. Hey, I'm wanting to purchase this plant for this particular reason. If you're going to a garden center that has an educated staff with many master gardeners on staff, they will know that, yes, this will work perfectly for your ser- scenario. Yeah, or it, or it no, also, it's not going to work well. It's just like a common sense thing. One well, yeah. time I said we should get a whatever tree, and you were like, where are we going to put it? And sometimes you get excited about something, but you have to consider its location. Right, and and if, you, if you're not familiar with that particular growing aspect of it, you've just seen a picture on the line, hey, I want this, you talk to that staff, and they'll say, yeah, it's not going to work. I, 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 you can buy it, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'd much rather you not buy it and not give us the money because you're going to be disappointed with the long-term effects of what you're going to intend to do with this particular plant and the location you're going to put it in. Another thing is is definitely if there is an issue, you purchase a plant, you take it home, two days later it's dead, and you know you, you followed the... You did nothing wrong. You did, <laughs> you did nothing wrong. Definitely dig that plant up and take it back and talk to the manager, and more than more than often than not, they'll be willing to exchange it or whatever they have to do, because obviously they want you to be successful too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, again, we don't want to be shocked if we see plants with bugs on them, not excessive bugs, uh, all garden centers, even the good ones, have they, they battle with the issue, and it's hard to protect you uh, from getting plant, you know, from plants that do not have bugs. But a few bugs are good because they haven't sprayed harmful chemicals across the whole garden center to kill everything. So the plant looks picture perfect, Pinterest type of image for when you purchase it. So that a little bit's good. That's not terrible uh, to a degree, and you have to be use common sense to, to figure that out. But most garden centers uh, have very very few uh, bugs in uh, on their plants, right? And you also want to consider if you don't know, <clears throat> if you don't know how to feed that plant or something, you definitely want to look into that as yeah. well because there's different nutrients that certain plants need, like blueberries versus strawberries versus tomatoes and so on. Absolutely. So that's just some of the uh, different categories or different things you need to be aware of before you go to your local independent garden center or any garden center and purchase plants for your garden, patio, deck, wherever uh, on that. Well, when we come back, we're going to go over how much food does it take to feed you for a year? What? How much should you be planting to feed your family? You can always visit us at the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden or Radio Show and send us an email. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. 
Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patients. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear in all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. Your plants are greener when using Hydrobox, revolutionary in plant watering. Hydrobox catches the water from water and delivers it straight to the roots to release when plants need it. You will water three times less often and plants grow faster. Hydrobox is an innovative little gel filled pouch that goes in the bottom of a pot, container, or grow bag. Multiple sizes based on need. Easy to install and use. For indoor and outdoor use. Saves time and money. Lasts up to three years. Look for it at homedepot.com or visit gohydrobox.com. New, new natural healing ointment. USDA certified organic. Get your tube at nunuhealing.com. Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Help for, for weeding. ProPlugger.com. A heat mat not required. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe, organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products, from plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides, organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Heat mats are not required for seed starting unless you're in a very cold area or in a greenhouse with low temperatures. If you're in a room with ambient temperature of 70 degrees or more, the soil will be warm and the seeds will start just fine. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. BobX is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. BobX deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. BobX can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more, visit BobX.com. B O B B. Bex.com. Beans and Barley Marketing Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store, puts east side in Greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need, from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh juice, carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamin supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available. Open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee. 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart.com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart.com. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mel's also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mel's today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Hi, I'm Nikki Jabor from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and we're back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back, my friends. I knew you'd stay around till after the break. 
Uh, I've got a question for you. Do you want a product that from a company that trusts their product and believes that growing organically is the main reason why we should be growing food? And if that is true, then Dr. Earth is the company for you because they have all of those premises. They have those goals. That's what they their, their uh, outlook is. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge natural organic garden-friendly products. Based on research and innovation after 28 years, they're the leader in organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure-free fertilizers, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizer. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family, that is the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about. They have experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. When it comes to how much we should grow to feed our family for a year, the concept has kind of lost a little uh, pop because we have the convenience of grocery stores now that we once had not so much of. Many years ago, maybe some of you are, remember these times, or you can ask your grandparents, or they've told stories about they only went to the grocery store once a week, if that, because the journey was so far, or grocery stores really wasn't that common. And they had to grow what they wanted to eat. And if they didn't grow it, they didn't eat it. It wasn't, hey, it's uh, December 23rd, I want a pineapple. I'm just going to go down to Beans and Barley and pick one up or Outpost or wherever the case is. Even probably no pineapples existed at that point. Well, to a certain degree. Right. So, yeah, so that was the... The Victory Garden was... Or, that's, oh, this is where the concept came from. Right, this is yeah, where the concept came because from. Because we had to grow... They had to provide for themselves. Right, we had, had to be self-sustainable to a certain degree because we had wartime efforts going and then on. Ap- yeah, and then after that, th- a lot of things changed. Like, they invented the aluminum can, and the and women went back to work, and then things became more convenient. But now it seems that while we do enjoy the convenience... We're the satisfaction the and satisfaction. the guarantee of knowing what we're growing and what's in the food that we're growing outweighs some of that convenient factor. Right. So a lot of people are paying attention to what's in their food, and now they want to grow and possibly preserve and 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 do all of this. But a lot of people are like, how much should I grow? What should I grow for myself, for my family? Well, first of all, whatever. grow what you gr- you're going to eat. Grow what you like, okay, I think num- that's, number one. I think that's the biggest thing is thinking about that. Um, Just because you find a chart online that says, okay, grow okra and cauliflower and broccoli. Well, if you can't grow cauliflower and broccoli and you don't like okra, there's three strikes there. You're out. Uh, so you want to th- grow something that you like, but also you want to grow enough that su- suffices but, but you Joey, through the year. But, yeah. sometimes you and I grow stuff that I don't like. But I like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so anyway. We're going to go over several things here, more common vegetables, to kind of give you an idea of what it would take uh, to feed your family for a year. A basic outline here. Now, these will vary from... Uh, location to location, but it gives you a, a general sense of what you're looking for here. But the biggest thing is you also have to think about how much space you have and then at that point you want to probably prioritize. If you don't have a lot of space, you want to prioritize what you want to grow versus what you might want to buy from a farmer's market or something else. And when we talk about these particular plants, it's not that this is enough for every meal, every day, all year long. This is a variation of a mortgageboard of meals. Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord of meals that you're going to consume. So it's not just a tomato every day, every meal. Okay. So asparagus, if you want it, uh, this is for family of four. So kind of that's kind of the, 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 the outline here. 40, uh, 40 plants, uh, it's a perennial, comes back year after year. can last 20 to 50 years. So 40 plants, that'll be enough. And you can uh, pickle it. I are you? Can you freeze it? Can you blanch it or freeze it? Okay, you can freeze asparagus. Yeah, you can, you can freeze it. So that's a, a good outline there. But asparagus, we find, bite early in the season, it really works better than trying to establish a bed that you could utilize something else uh, all if year. If you don't have the space, yeah. yeah. Um, so beets, we like beets. You can you can pickle beets. I th- I'm sure you can freeze them. You can freeze pretty much any vegetable. Um, but you can definitely pickle them. They're good. It says 10 feet. And this is a spring and fall crop. We talked about that mm-hmm. last week about spring crops, cool weather crops. So this is what beets are. Broccoli, um, five plants. And that can be uh, cool at uh, spring and fall. Mm-hmm. Brussels sprouts, same thing. Well, so Brussels sprouts we find here in, in the upper Midwest. We plant them in early April, and they get ready by October. So for us, it's a one-season plant. So uh, we plant 
more than what we normally think we want because we find that we really enjoy them and and so you've never had a good Brussels sprout unless you've grown it from your plant started and grown in your garden. Yeah, um, and so then bush beans is a 15 feet, so that's... And it's that's a session a- planting. Every two weeks you want to put another row in because bush beans take 40 to 60 days to reach maturity. They'll produce for two to three weeks and then their life cycle is over. So you want that succession, that continuous harvest through the growing season. And, the, uh, and, and bush beans will produce a lot. And, and, and as long as you continue to harvest, you'll have more bush beans than you know what to do with. Uh, pole beans, it says three poles. So to me, that would mean that you would you would choose a, something that's going to trellis and plant around that item. And that would be one like of a teepee your, type of like structure. Mm-hmm. Uh, those take 70, 80 days to reach maturity. will produce all the way up to frost. So take your pick. What do you want, uh, the, the, the pole beans or the bush beans or the space you have available? Yep, cabbage. So it just looks like all the brassicas are about five plants each. That sounds about right, unless you really enjoy cabbage. Maybe you do a lot of sauerkraut or Cold coleslaw form, or yeah. something, then maybe you want to do more. Carrots, 10 feet. Now, yeah, carrots are 10 feet. Succession planting. The, the thing you want to be aware of with carrots is during the warmest portions of the year, not a good time to plant carrots. Do it early in the spring. Up till the days start to get really warm, and then start back dated off. Uh, they can uh, off in the fall. They can't handle a frost. They just not good with a freeze. So be aware of that. And that you can do a lot of carrots in ten foot. Uh, mm-hmm. Put a carrot every two inches. That's a lot of carrots. Cauliflower. That would be five plants. It's spring and fall crop. Chard. Now chard is kind of funny because you can grow it year round. You can cut it back after, when you harvest the outer leaves, and it's kind of the a continuous harvest. Continuous harvest. Uh, yeah. Um, corn. It says 15 feet. I would say if you're if you are going to grow corn, you would make that a 15 foot block so by like five by foot, five, three by five, or yeah, three by five or five by five or whatever. Corn is, can be hard to grow, especially if you're growing something that's an heirloom variety or organic and, variety. And I wouldn't. Here's the thing with corn. People say, "Can I grow corn in, your, in my backyard?" Absolutely, you can do that. You have good soil nutrients. Think of the space that it takes and the energy and the input you have to put in for one ear or possibly two ears of corn per stalk. See if it works for you, or you can always buy organic GMO-free corn from your local farmer's market for like 12 and a half cents an ear is what it comes down to during the peak season. You can freeze it that way, too. So it, it, you can do it either way. Uh, cucumbers, it says two hills. I, what, I don't know what that means. We plant our cucumbers in a row, basically. So I don't know if that means two plants, but um, that's a little unclear. But I would say that if you really like cucumbers, which a lot of people really like garden cucumbers, I would kind of I would do like four, at least four plants. And you want to make sure you trellis those because that's going to help them immensely. And another thing to keep in mind with cucumbers is that there's a certain point. They're not a long-lasting plant. They're not like a tomato or a pole bean or... Anything like a, even a bush bean, they they don't make it much past September. We get a lot of questions like my cucumber didn't make it past September, and it's like that's completely normal. So you want to keep that in mind. Uh, we also have a greens. greens, ten that's foot ten, row, ten foot row. That's, that's spring, fine, and, spring, spring and fall. fall. Unless you're growing kale, kale you can do about five plants, and then that will grow. I don't know. It gets better after frost, so yes. it's a very hardy plant. Leaf lettuce is ten foot row early in the spring, late in the fall. Uh, that works uh, well there. It does get bitter during the summer, it, so you want to avoid that. Onions, uh, spring planting, as soon as soil can be worked. We do about a 20-foot row because we like a lot of onions, but it says 5-foot uh, row of onions on uh, two inch centers, 3-inch uh, centers, somewhere in that range. Peas, I don't know if I would necessarily succession plant those. Uh, they are spring and fall crop, and 10 feet sounds good to me, definitely. Peppers, three plants. I would go more than three yeah, plants. Yeah, because peppers like to be friends, so I'd probably go like five or seven. Radishes, five five feet, and then uh, squash, two hills, tomatoes, five plants. Tomatoes, you might want to grow more than five plants, yeah. depending on how much you love yeah. the tomatoes, what you're going to do well, yeah, with them. If we, you're going to can a lot. We plant 110 tomatoes, so we can a lot. We freeze a lot. We do a lot of things with tomatoes. So yeah. this then, is just a general guideline of con- consumption here. And then turnips, it says 10 feet. So that kind of gives you an idea. You can go online and find a lot of charts uh, for that. Another thing you can do is buy, uh, to, to prepare your lawn to keep the insects and rodents out of it by using a product from Phylum Bioproducts. Yeah, so soon it will be warming up again and you want to make sure you can enjoy your yard without sharing it with the beetles and the grubs. 
um, you can find all sorts of articles about this, Japanese beetles, the different grubs coming. It's easy to use. You can apply it with any commercial spreader. Phylum Bioproducts, they have all sorts of great things to prevent prevent these that pests. Prevent the, yeah, to, to proactive instead of reactive. And it it's specifically targets the grub and beetle invaders without harming the beneficial ones like bees, ladybugs, butterflies. So you can go to Phylum Bioproducts. It's P-H-Y L-L-O-M bioproducts.com and they will have everything you need there to help target these these pests. Yeah, Yeah. so uh, check them out if you are tired of Japanese beetles in your yard and grubs, that's the product that you want. It's organic, it works phenomenal. Well, when we come back, do not go anywhere. We're going to talk with Ellen Polishuk, uh, she is an author of Start Your Farm. Just because she, she grows on 20 acres doesn't mean that her information is not valuable to us. Uh, she, we're going to talk about building microbial life in your soil, building your soil. So don't go anywhere. It's the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Got a question? Email the show at twbgshow at gmail.com. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter earth auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root-to-soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at flameengineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. Healthy soil equals healthy plants. Know what's beneath your soil before you plant your garden. It's time for this week's Michigan Garden Moment. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flower vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at migardener.com. Soil is the lifeblood of your garden. Without good soil, you're simply not going to have good plants, regardless of how much fertilizer you use. You cannot just look at your soil and say, that's good soil or that's bad soil in your garden. You can have some tell signs of how the plants recently grew in that particular location. But until you get an analyzation done by a soil, test, you will not know the exact science behind what is needed or what you may have too much of in your garden. A soil test is very inexpensive. You can purchase them at your local garden center for a relatively decent understanding or range of requirements or what your soil has. For a more scientific-based test, you can go to SoilSavvy.com and use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. What the Soil Savvy test provides is a report comprised of soil pH and 14 nutrients, including NPK. It gives you an understanding of what your soil is lacking or have an abundance of, and then you can go about figuring out the best way to change the soil or fix it in order to have a healthy garden. Until you know what's in your soil, you're not going to be able to give the plants what they need in order to thrive in your garden. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. Drip Garden is a self-watering, self-fertilizing, pop-up vertical garden with automatic timer. Easy to use, durable, grow 36 plants in a 4 foot by 4 foot area. DripGarden.com Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune. Just 99 cents at MIGardener.com Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to MIGardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. MIGardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. 
gardens know the hardest part of building a garden is building the rows. Now there is a long overdue patented, hand-pulled, heavy-duty, lightweight row building marvel that you can find at rowmaker.com. The rowmaker can easily and quickly build multiple straight line, perfectly spaced rows of proportional height, width, and depth. This yellow workhorse makes building rows easy and so fast it will save you hours. Just pull it across your tilled garden and work smarter, not harder. See it to believe it at rowmaker.com. Planting your garden will never get easier. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at norwalkjuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at rootassassinshovel.com. World's coolest rain gauge.com. Need I say more? The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. There are not too many things in life that is free that aren't gimmicky. Well, uh, there's one thing that's free that is not a gimmick, and that is the classes at Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center. Classes in session. Register for Blue Mel's free gardening courses. You can get $5 in Blue Mel bucks for every course you attend. There are six courses, and what happens if you attend all six? You get the Blue Mel bucks, but you also get... Your class of 2019 Blue Mel's Green Thumb certification. You can register at bluemills.com. You can visit them at Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center at 4930 West Loomis Road, just south of Layton, or you can call them at 414-282-4220. We will be there April 11th, Thursday evening at 6.30, talking on growing vegetables and herbs in your garden so you have a successful year and you can answer, ask all your questions and we'll have answers for you. So Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center at bluemills.com, right here in the city of Milwaukee. <music> to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show. Check, check. Is anybody still listening? Anybody out there? Check, check. With your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Hello, let's go to the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our next guest. Helen Polishuk is a biological farm consultant and teacher. She helps farmers, agricultural professionals, and eaters of all kinds to appreciate and understand the complexity and beauty of farming, the nexus of plants, animals, soils, and people. Her new book is Start Your Farm. To find out more about her on her website, you can go to Plant to Profit. Dot com. Welcome to the program, Ellen. Good morning. How are you? Well, you're very, we're good. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us and educate Holly and myself and all of our listeners with your knowledge on, on a lot of topics here that we're going to get into. Good. You're welcome. So we, we like to build our soil. A lot of people are become, coming to learn that you need to build your soil as opposed to trying to... F- feed it or feed your plant and the soil feeds your plant what is the best way to build your soil organically well uh, one thing to remember right from the get-go is to not kill your soil by using harsh chemicals so that's the first thing to do is to stop killing the biology in your soil by using herbicides pesticides and fungicides so that's an easy one to check off and then the second avenue then is instead of just what do we not do, what do we do instead, and that is to keep bringing life to the soil. And that means adding all kinds of carbon sources and to grow lots of plants, all kinds of plants. Having living plants on the soil is what will help feed the biology, and that is what makes an organic soil work. Yeah, we have to bring in those microbes in order to uh, create the healthy soil. And and there's so many good organic ways to do it. Uh, We see a lot of times on TV or or on the Internet, because we know everything's true there, you want to feed the plant (laughs) and, and just leave the soil as the medium. That's not how nature intended for this whole thing to work. 
Exactly. And luckily, um, it's sort of like that Kevin Costner movie, I can't remember what it's called, Field of Dreams. And, and the rule is, if you build it, they will come. So you don't need to spend money buying microbes. You just need to create an environment that encourages the microbes, and then they just come. So that's the good news. Which it's just fascinating that you know, as humans, we seem to be able to mess things up a lot easier or or more frequent than, uh, and the nature takes many years to fix what we've messed up. Exactly. So, uh, when if somebody is having problems uh, year after year trying to grow a specific plant or a specific vegetable that they want to grow and they enjoy, but they keep failing at it, would you suggest that they continue to try and look at different avenues to grow it, or just move on and plant something else, and, and why? Well, I guess I would say it's worth some amount of effort to try to figure out what's the problem. Um, and usually, I, I would find it unusual for there to be just one plant or one species that isn't working. Um, and so the question, I would ask a series of questions like, how, does this plant want to grow here in Wisconsin or in Zone 6 or whatever you want to say? Um, what are you asking that plant to do and is it in the right place? And then go down to some specifics about your soil. Are, what's the soil pH in your garden? Is it in, a, in the right range for growing that plant? Um, and then after a series of a couple of those kind of basic questions, um, maybe you can figure out what's been missing. And if not, maybe it's time to take a break and move on and focus on the things that are successful so that you, you know, generate positivity and good feelings about it. So the garden is not a place that gives you a bummer feeling, but it makes you joyful. That's some some uh, great tip. So for those of us who may want a farm someday, what are some steps now we can take to get the ball rolling? Say we are pretty good growers um, or you know learning more about growing. How can we kind of get the ball rolling otherwise? Well, I think I would ask you, how do you know that you're good at growing? Because that's really what you need to be focusing on um, before you get some piece of land that may be a farm for you is to really brush up on your prowess. How and, and so my question to you is, how do you know that you're good at growing? You're good at growing compared to what? And so how do you know if you're good if you haven't seen other people's gardens or other people's farms? And so that means I encourage you to start getting to field days or workshops, start studying books, and some stuff on the internet and and start to see where you are in the scale of good. Are you really good at growing stuff? What kind of yields are you getting? How long are your crops standing prolifically in in your garden and so forth? So you have a lot of opportunity for education. You need to find out more and more and more. And then if you have the time in your schedule to start volunteering or working for a farm. Get yourself onto somebody else's farm and get paid to learn on their on their dime. See what I'm saying? Make mistakes on their dime. Now, for many grown-ups who have a complicated, uh, busy life, that's not possible. But other people do have an opportunity to uh, volunteer on a Saturday morning or a Friday afternoon on a working vegetable farm and really get to see what it looks like, what it feels like, what the flow of the work is like. We are talking with Ellen Polishuk. She's a biological farm consultant and teacher. Now, Ellen, you talked about the the farm aspect and what you need to know. You grow on a 20-acre farm. For many of those of us who are listening, we don't have that type of land. But what are some ways that you have managed to to be successful at 20 acres that maybe we could uh, relate to and convert over to our smaller backyards? Because some people can't handle even 200 square feet just because of their busy schedule schedule or level of education, how are you able to, to manage 20 acres and be very successful at it? Oh, gosh, that's a big question. Um, the, I'd say the most important thing to, to bring to the table for your audience is that I have a really what I would call robust rotation, which is that 
out of that 20 acres, half of it is on vacation, is what I call it. Half of it is growing fertility, and the other half is growing my cash crop. So, and so that's a pretty, yeah, that's a pretty generous rotation. And, and that's the key, even to a backyard gardener. We have to rotate these crops, and in some instances, give the land a little rest, whether we mulch it or however we want to do it, uh, to it, so we don't overexhaust it. Yeah, I would say so. I think it's more important on on a farming scale than it is on a gardening scale because as gardeners, you know, we can bring in lots of compost, lots of love um, because we have more money to spend on it, let's put it that way, than we would as commercial growers. But it is really important to have that rotation in place so that we're not continually growing the same family in the same place over and over again because then we're really asking for trouble from a disease standpoint. Okay. So how's how's the way that you help avoid gardening burnout or feel overwhelmed by your 20 acres? How do you avoid that, that burnout? Yeah. Um, I think one of the important things is to, during the course of the day or the time that you're spending in the garden, is to keep changing your body position. You know, for me, the burnout was not so much mental as physical at times because gardening is is demanding on the body. And so on a regular basis to stand up straight and lift your arms up and look up into the sky, you know, because most of gardening is crouched over and looking down. Um, Sometimes it means laying on the ground flat and making your spine completely flat and looking up at the sky. So I would say taking care of your body in the in the moment in the garden over and over as the day progresses is a really good way to keep your body from from being grumpy. Um, and then in terms of more of an emotional kind of burnout, I would say to grow the things that you really want to grow that really make you happy, that just seeing them there, whatever that plant is, just brings a smile to your face. Absolutely. And that keeps Absolutely. You feeling good. Yeah. It, it, it's not, you know, it makes, and some people do this, they grow things they don't like uh, for a variety of reasons, and then they're not even enjoying their time in the garden. Exactly. Uh, what? Where can we find more about you? Uh, how can people find more about the education that you provide on your website and the information to help better our backyard garden? Well, uh, the website that you mentioned at the opening of the show here is is, the, is my business website, Plant to Profit, and on there is where I list uh, all the workshops that I'm going to do around the country. Uh, there's a couple of videos on there also that are maybe of interest to some of your folks, but definitely my my audience is usually folks that are engaged in farming at some kind of a commercial level and less about home gardening. Well, absolutely. We appreciate you taking time to join us on the program. Again, that website uh, for people who want to go over and journey and find... uh, Plant2Profit.com Well, Ellen, we thank you for taking time uh, and spending with us and sharing some of your knowledge with Holly, myself, and all of our listeners. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. And when we come back, it'll be your garden questions and our garden answers. You can find more about us and all of our guests and all past shows at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com under the radio tab and the highlight tab. And you can always send us an email at TWVGShow. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. gardening question now is the time to call in on the ivorganics.com 3-in-1 plant guard hotline at 414-444-5250 Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional great soil test for the home gardener. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. 
Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Wisconsin Greenhouse Company has custom-made greenhouses to suit your needs. Grow fruit and vegetables all year long. Strongest greenhouses available that will last a lifetime. Beautiful design available in any size and color. Weather resistant, energy efficient to save on that heating cost. Mix and match with glazings to suit your climate. Sturdy and durable. They'll hold up to those heavy snow loads. They'll even add them to homes. For agricultural to lodging to entertaining, it's a great addition to any garden or landscape. Check them out at West. WisconsinGreenhouseCompany.com The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Thermaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit Dharmaceuticals.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart.com. Absolutely packed with helpful gardening information, Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart. Eco Garden Systems is a revolutionary way to grow food. A fully contained raised platform with a conventional watering system. Solar power unit optional. Made from recycled material in the U.S., Eco Garden Systems Raised Garden Bed offers sustainable organic gardening that is environmentally sound, quick and easy to set up, maintain, and fun to use. Fill your garden with soil and plant your seeds. Your Eco Garden will take care of the rest. Can set up in backyard, patio, and even your driveway. Any level surface. For more information, visit EcoGardenSystems.com. Use coupon code WIVEG2019 and get $295 off listed price of $1,695 plus free shipping, a $250 value at EcoGardenSystems.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sides. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts Joey and Holly Baird. You got a question? Get a hold of us through the Ivy Organic Hotline. 
Ivy Organic 3-1 Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces for use on your roses, fruit, and nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com. You can reach us by the ivyorganics.com 3-1 Plant Garden email inbox, and that address is twvgshow at gmail.com, or you can text us on the Instant Access IVOrganics.com text line, and that's 414-368-9311. Uh, we had a number of questions come in this week. One from our new station in Southern California. We have pocket gophers in Southern California, and they are just starting to make their appearance in the yard. What is the best way to get rid of them? Well, we found a bunch of suggestions that might work, uh, things like scaring them they don't like certain music uh just all sorts of stuff realistically. And, and realistically um it says that the best way to work to get rid of them is poison baits now we joey and i try to live as much harmony as possible in nature with the garden and in our in our lives however Sometimes you do need to use something like poison to get rid of an animal. Um, and it sounds like the consensus, as we did our research for this question, that was the best solution. Yeah, firearms or poison, kind of what it came down to right. uh, on that. I don't know if you can f- uh, find a pocket gopher to, I, I don't know. to get them, but yeah. Uh, um, I hope you can help me with this. The untreated wood in my raised bed is beginning to be destroyed, and uh, I need to replace it. Can I use treated wood or the newer plastic wood that that uh, is used for decking. Your recommendation would be greatly appreciated. Appreciated. Your emails and your classes are wonderful. Well, thank you for the compliment. There's a couple of things. With the treated lumber, you do not have to worry about the arsenic in which that once was treated back in the early 90s. That has been changed. It is treated with a copper fungicide or copper a copper chemical, and it's not. Le- it won't leach out in the soil. Uh, to any degree that it would affect the soil life. Treated lumber works well. You can do untreated lumber and it will be fine. You can also do the plastic wood that the decking comes on. The only disadvantage to that is the plastic will heat up much quicker and emit the heat into the raised bed quicker and more relevant than the wood would. You can always send us a question at twvgshow at gmail.com. Some seedlings with true leaves and others without true leaves have come up on my seed tray. Should I fertilize now or wait until they have all have true leaves? Uh, this is referring to peppers. Uh, so the, que- so the, 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 the best answer I can give you is you want to wait. There's plenty of energy in the seed coat to keep the plant alive until the, the true leaves develop. That's the first set of real leaves that come out of it. Secondly, if you're growing in a good potting soil that contains a slow-release fertilizer, you don't have to worry about fertilization. If you are growing in peat pellets or soilless mix, then yes, you're going to have to supplement with some type of organic or inorganic uh, fertilizer at a quarter of the strength is what I would recommend. You could go full strength, but these seedlings are tender, so you're going to want to be very cautious of how much fertilizer. So quarter of the strength liquid uh, fertilizer, um, even a a soil diva type of nutrient supplement would work. But potting soil should be just fine for your seedlings. All right, next question. Brad from Philadelphia. I like growing my own food because I know what is in the food. Also, I know what is not in my food. I want to get and keep the most nutrients in my vegetables and fruits that I'm growing. How can I best do this? Thank you. With that question, let's go out to Christine. She is the farm operational manager at Standard Process and see what she has to offer for her advice. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local healthcare professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hi, this is Christine Nason. I'm the farm operations manager at the Standard Process Farm. Brad from Philadelphia was wondering, how can we ensure nutrient density in our fruits and vegetables? I love this question, Brad, and it's what we are very passionate about at Standard Process. I have been the manager of this farm for 19 years, and 
I really have come to believe there's no way our fruits and vegetables can be more nutrient dense than the soil it's from. So my advice to you would be start with your soil, make sure it's a healthy, viable living system, get a soil test, work with your extension agents. If your soil is healthy, your food will be too. Always appreciate the information you provide for us and our listeners, Christine, about getting the most nutrient-dense vegetables and fruits in the garden. Well, we were out of time, and we certainly appreciate yours. Before I get into what's coming up next week on the program, I want to remind you that... The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Coming up next week on the program, we're going to go over four mistakes that all gardeners make. We've all made them. We'll we'll cover those so you don't have to make them, as well as five rules of gardening. Our guest will be Charles Hancock. He is more relevantly known as the Old Alabama Gardener on YouTube. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different fashions. One, you can go to the website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the radio tab, and that will give you full segment or full shows of in studio and podcast of this program and all past programs you can also go to your favorite podcast providing website and search the wisconsin vegetable gardener podcast or radio show and that will come up and give you the uh, whole line of list of what we have done all through season one and season two until next week for holly baird i'm joy baird and we will see you in the garden You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joey and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcasting, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM, Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.